Hey everybody. Uh, my brain. Yeah, today is uh, one of those days where you wake up, you, you got some decent rest, but you still wake up and you feel like, nope, didn't, didn't, don't feel rested at all. So it's been a bit of a struggle. And so, you know, it hasn't been an afternoon coffee. It's been more of a straight IV line of coffee all day long to keep me on my feet. But we made it this far and it's time for another video. So, I mean, I've been watching uh, Star Ladder unfold so far and with some interesting results. I mean, Nip blew up God sent. That was already interesting. Uh, definitely didn't expect it to be that one-sided, but NIP showed up to play. And unfortunately, MVP, the Korean team, right? One of the three Asian teams attending the event. Uh, the Korean team MVP weren't able to pull through versus Flipside, even though I think that they set themselves up with the help of Flipside, obviously. A few anti-eco rounds that uh, definitely could have gone better for Flipside there. I think they lost three anti-ecos in nine rounds, something along those lines. Flipside definitely looked shaky, and so MVP were in position to actually take that map, but unfortunately their T-side was completely lacking, and they weren't able to do anything at all. So a little bit disappointing there, but so far, I think Star Series has been a fun event to watch. We've been seeing some some decent enough games. I mean, there's been a few blowouts, but there's there have been a few ones, a few good ones in the middle as well. So, so far, a nice balance. We'll see how things go. But uh, that's not what I want to talk about today. Just updating you guys. I don't know if you're watching. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about today, actually, um, is uh, Sloth Squadron. And I got to talk with him a little bit earlier today, which was really nice, right? Because I've been, I've been trying to keep tabs on his work for a little bit now uh, with his, um, obviously with his, uh, his weapon mod uh, that he's been working on, uh, changing quite a few of the values in game going. And basically the reason why I love Sloth, he's one of those guys, you always have someone like that regardless of the game, right? When a patch comes out, boom, you've got one guy who's going to be breaking it down, getting into the nitty-gritty details of all the values that are behind, you know, that behind the scenes that we can't really see or get feel for, right? Sloth is going in there, finding out, okay, exactly what changed and how does that, what impact does that have on the game? How does that carry over? And so I just love it, right? When Whenever an update comes out, I'm just looking, okay, what's Sloth going to tell us this time, right? What, it, what exactly uh, changed here? And so he, of his own volition, has been making, you know, his, his basically a, a second version of the game almost. I mean, obviously, it's, ha it's a... It's a mod that's happening with the game, uh, an add-on, right? That uh, you can you can experiment with that changes quite of the a few of the values in the game. And I'm going to be putting all of this information uh, below, right? In the um, all of the information below in the uh, description box, uh, link to his website. He has a website basically where you can go and check. It's at 1.2 right now. He's working on 1.3, and so I'm really excited to see you know like what comes next. But he has a whole website where you can go and check out right what his kind of version is of the game, right? How the guns would handle, how the movement handles, scope speed, quick scope. I uh, mean, pistols don't one shot, headshot people, right? Apart from the Deagle and the R8 versus helmets, right? You know, making changes like this, and this is all based off of pro feedback, community feedback, his own, you know, impressions of how the game should be played. I, I think it's just really interesting, right? Because he, ha he doesn't have his hands tied. You know, there's nothing there to stop him from just basically pouring his heart and soul into it and making all of these changes and really experimenting, I think is the main thing, right? More so than what the devs um, are capable of doing, right? The devs, I think what's going on with them is that they're very worried about destabilizing things or making too many changes at once that then make it this is the this is the trap that you have right when you're when you're a developer is that sometimes you you attempt to make too many changes and we've seen that in the past and they've done that in the past right i believe the r8 was probably one of the big patches right where they made a huge change in that and then they also made changes to like the glock and the pistols and and they, they made all these changes right and then you kind of lose track of what's at, like the impact and which change exactly is having an impact on the game in which way. And so you're like, right, that's a good thing. But out of these five changes that we made, 10 changes that we made, right, which is actually the one leading to that good change that we like. And so it gets or it could be the other way, right? We don't like this change, but because we've added so many things in, it makes it a little bit tricky. So I'm not saying that, you know, sloths. Like, Sloth isn't approaching it from that way. Sloth is just basically saying, right, here's a com pretty much completely different version of the game. And um, and let's experiment here and see, right, you know, like, if, if really adjusting the pistols makes a difference. But he's, he's trying to adjust it all on, uh, on the whole, right, rather than just these small elements, which, what, which is exactly what Valve are doing, right? Valve, I think, are worried about making too many changes at once in one big go and then kind of just, like fuzzing it all up right 
fudging it all up, fucking it all up. I mean, a number of ways you can say it, but I think that Valve right now are kind of worried about that, and so they're 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 kind of trying to keep an eye on things. Uh, they they I don't think that they want to destabilize the system uh, entirely as well. They have a good system in place, at least perhaps the the way that they feel uh, that uh, you know it's. I don't know. The more that I think about it, the more frustrated I get. Obviously, uh, just you know, RNG, etc. Thinking about. I mean, it was fun because Ryan, when Ryan was posting on the subreddit, right? Um, he was, he got called out at some point by somebody saying, you know, like, what about the running M4 spray? Blah blah blah. And uh, Ryan was just like, well, you know, if you can come up with a better system than RNG, basically, when it comes to bullet spray and patterns and how to punish somebody who's running and shooting, you know, please put it together into a post. Come back to us, right? We talked about this when we did the Valve video, um, the Valve devs and us, I think, um, a while back. But um, when it comes to um, these kinds of changes, I think that Valve... Valve will have to get there in their own time. I mean, I think that Sloth right now is trying perhaps to be the ice frog of CSGO, right? Or say, right, this is, I'm willing to take this on myself. This is my vision for the game. But unfortunately, you know, he is separate from the actual developers of the game. And I think there's a lot of factors going into the devs of the game. What happens, I mean, I think there's also this uh, that comes into it, which is if you are a Valve dev, and you are realizing perhaps that you're losing control of the situation or that the game is is very weird right now, but you decide to go for a real big change, right? But you base this big change off of a third party's feedback or off of somebody else's work. Um, do what, what kind of message does that send throughout the rest of the community or com company, right? Uh, that you work with where it's peer review I wonder if that's like too drastic, right? But if you know you're sitting around with your with your peers and they're just like, right, okay, so you just took somebody else's work and put that into the game, uh, what are you doing, right? I don't know. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder about the, that sort of scenario. Uh, just, I mean, there, it feels like there's so many factors going into it, and um, Valve are being very, very careful about the changes that they're making because I don't think that they want to destabilize a game that's obviously making them money and that, you know, people are playing still. It hasn't been a mass exodus. Uh, still quite a few players, right? And so every change that you make might be drastic. It's a, it's a tough scenario. But I think for, for those of you guys, this is why I wanted, you know, if you're watching and, you're, and you, you feel like you want to try something different, right? Um, I think that you guys should go and check out Sloth Squadron's work. And, and test it out and see for yourselves, you know, how does it feel? What do you think? Compare it to the game uh, that it's currently being played, right? And just and see, like, right, okay, what, what, how does this make me feel? How do I think about this? And how, how does this feel when I play it, right? Sloth's vision. And see if that's, like, the, the way that things, um, or how things should work, right, for CSGO. I mean, I'm not thinking that the solution is obviously to get some kind of massive wave going where we're going to be pressuring Valve to try and do something that they don't want to do as in make massive changes to the game. It is their game. It is their vision after all. But um, now for me, it is, um, it's, it's very interesting to have somebody like Sloth who's willing to put so much work into it and really come up with a, you know, a product that's very interesting or a product, right? He can't sell the damn thing. I mean, maybe he could, but uh, to, to come up with a different version like that, that really gets you thinking, right? Okay. You can always try and remember how it used to be, but now with his tool, you're able to actually experience it hands-on, right? It's not just, okay, hypothetically thinking if the pistols didn't one-shot headshot or, you know, if we had quick scope, what would happen or blah, 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 right? It's like you can actually get in and test it for yourself and really feel out how, how it feels to play a game like that in CSGO with the models, with the speed, with all of that. Does it actually work or not? And so for, for um, it's not a sandbox, but for, you know, some kind of platform, basically, where you can experiment and see what's going on. I think it's very interesting, and I'm excited to see um, what, he, what he does for the future. There's also, I mean, you can also listen to his opinions. I mean, he obviously, in the website with the change logs, I've been going through all of those. Um, he's very detailed in, like, what he, how he sees certain guns should be played, what he thinks about certain scenarios, right? But he also did a talk show not too long ago with Thorin and Yanko. Actually, it was it was a little bit. Long. It was it was it was a good bit a while ago. But I'll put that link in the bottom as well if you want to go and listen to how what he thinks and him breaking it down with Yanko, with YNK, right, and Thorin. Um, definitely really interesting video to listen to. Gives you a bit of insight and just a different point of view. And um, I think it's a real pleasure. And I think we're 
real lucky to have like someone like him in the community who's actually you know putting in a monstrous amount of work so very cool and just felt like you know today i didn't really have too many topics to think about right where as far as you know i'm just sitting here watching star series but um i thought that you know it'd be cool to to give a bit of a shout out to sloth and um if you guys are interested by that sort of thing go and check it out and um i'll see you all tomorrow take care peace